Marked. 35 seconds to entry interface. Gentlemen. It's been a privilege flying with you. Stereotyping Jews is terrible! <laughs> So, in the spirit of science and thought experiments, I bring you the speed of light debunked. And now, this is just a thought experiment, but after this, if you still believe nothing can move faster than the speed of light, well, then enjoy your magical fantasy world built by math and magicians around theoretical nonsense. I've got a degree in homeopathic medicine! You've got a degree in baloney. <laughs> so, let's begin with the Earth. And on the Earth, we place a guy. And away from the Earth, somewhere distant, we put the planet Venus. Now we're told that that is about 25 million miles from the Earth at its closest. Now on Venus, we place another guy. Let's just pretend. And he's there, and between them two, you give them a solid pole or a solid stick. Now, such a rod may not exist, but neither can a cannon shoot a cannonball around the Earth. So we're doing a thought experiment here. And so if the person on the earth pulled the stick, it would take two minutes for the guy on Venus to feel it, get out. I mean, come on, for reals, get the hell out of here. If I push the stick, the person on the sun or on the moon or on Venus or across a football field would feel it immediately. Jainism appears to not understand how force is transferred. Any applied force, be it a push, pull, or slap, will propagate through a medium, and that medium will dictate how fast the force moves through it. All Jainism needs to do is play with a slinky, or watch a Newton's cradle, to see that force is not instantly transferred. If the spatial distance between two events, A and B, is greater than the time interval between them multiplied by the speed of light, then there are frames of reference in which A precedes B, others in which B precedes A, and others in which they are simultaneous. As a result, if something were traveling faster than C relative to an inertial frame of reference, it would be traveling backwards in time relative to another frame, and causality would be violated. In such a frame of reference, an effect could be observed before its cause. Such a violation of causality has never been recorded and would lead to paradoxes such as the tachyonic anti-telephone. Well, we just described that happening, and now we see why it doesn't work. Jainism is apparently confused as to what a thought experiment is and how it differs from an actual experiment. Well, thought experiments can be fun and interesting. They don't debunk anything. Look at Zeno's paradoxes as an example. Did Zeno debunk walking to the park or shooting an arrow? Of course not. All Jainism shows is that if you break a couple of laws of physics, you can break a law of physics, and that's not a very impressive feat. What do I mean by Jaronism breaking a law of physics? For his thought experiment to be true, he would need a perfectly rigid stick. This perfectly rigid stick would need to be either infinitely dense or at absolute zero, so that the motion would be able to be transferred instantly through it. If the stick was infinitely dense, you would need an infinite force to push it. If the stick hit absolute zero, you would need an infinite amount of work to get it there. To summarize, Jaronism would need to produce infinity twice to break the speed of light with his Venus stick. To infinity and beyond! So those on the globe side, those who believe in science, are avoiding examining any apparently contrary evidence too closely to play down its importance or impugn its relevance. My name is Jaronism. While E. Jaronism. Genius. To contort themselves into explaining it away by any means possible. If you want an example of this, well, watch these comments. Watch the people saying, I'm an idiot. You, sir, are an idiot. Because they believe that a man on the sun and a man on the earth could be pulling the rod or stick for eight minutes until the other one knew that they pulled it, yet in eight minutes, they might have pulled a half mile worth of rod. So magically, the rod grows until when? What happens after eight minutes? The rod shrinks? Who loses their end? Does the middle disappear? 
This proves a paradox and proves relativity to be garbage as well as the idea that nothing can go faster than the speed of light. Just for fun, I'll play Jaronism's little game. Let's say flat earthers band together and construct a stick rigid enough to span the length of the earth to the sun and had two guys strong enough to pull at each end of the stick. In this situation, I would expect the stick to strain, then be pulled apart according to the tensile strength of the material. As for the guys, they would both pull, getting nowhere fast until the stick broke. If all the current laws of physics are to be observed at these great weights and sizes, why would we expect something ridiculous to happen? If the laws of physics were different at sizes such as these, perhaps due to the stick's effect on gravity, then we are entering a world I am unaware of. Things get very confusing in the worlds of the very large and the very small. Holy shit! <laughs> Let's look at uh, Cora here, this person asking, if there was a stick going from the Earth to the Moon and someone pulled the stick, would the person on the Moon feel it immediately? The answer that had the most amount of votes? No, the impulse could not, by definition, because that's what's really important now is by definition, not what would happen in reality. The impulse could not, by definition, propagate through the stick any faster than the speed of sound through the stick. Ignoring the fact that any such stick would collapse under its own weight and that wood, not being a terribly efficient conductor of sound, would likely absorb all the motion as heat. The impulse would take a little over a day to reach the moon. That's the 3,962 meters per second speed of sound through hardwood divided into the 384,000 kilometers between us and the moon. What is even being said here? If you base the design of rockets on science, they reach the moon. It works, bitches. It would take over a day to reach the moon? So what if I start pulling on the stick? So I can just pull, 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 pull the stick for over a day and the person on the moon would not know. And that wood, not being a terribly efficient conductor of sound, would likely absorb all the motion as heat. The stick is magically growing. This is what science and theoretical physics and nonsense has done to the world. Corrupted it. Made it a place where people say, that it could not, by definition, do something that we know our senses tell us could happen. Science tells you you're going to break your impossible fucking stick. How is this confusing? And what does the speed of sound have to do with me pushing one end of a stick? If I push one end of a stick, the other end immediately feels the result. Guys, come on. Think with me here. This is what our science tells us. This is what these men in high places have convinced us all of. Are you ready to stand up and say, nah, horseshit? Or are you ready to bow down to them some more and repeat and parrot Neil deGrasse every day that the universe has no obligation to make sense to us? Come, bow before your king. Bow, your shits. <laughs>